Alrighty, this video, this video will be about dual channel memory. There's a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of confusion about a dual channel memory. Dual channel is a better performance for your computer. Just because you have two channels for it to communicate. I have a video already about single channel. Dual channel, you really cannot run on one stick of memory. Obviously, dual, and you need two, four, six, eight, etc. As I mentioned on the other video, depending on the motherboard you get, you can run into some funny configurations. I know in the old days, I've run across a lot of funny, funny configurations. The off-the-shelf kind of computers usually have two slots or four slots. Uh, usually there's two will be single channel, two for the dual channel feature. You have one channel and one channel. They're separated. Sometimes they're all four together. They're color-coded, run together. You get into server boards. You get into more channels. You get into multi-channels because the processor can handle more channels out. Uh, I believe the Xeons can handle like eight channels right now. That's a lot of memory. If you got four computers running, you know, and you got four cores in them, or you got all these servers, or whatever you got going on. That could be a lot of memory. It adds up fast. So you got to remember on the server lines, they're different because you have multiple processors. Each processor has its own memory. So if you're running single channel on a server, it's going to be times the processors, the actual chips you have on there. So if you want to go from a single channel on a four processor computer, that means you're going to need at least four more sticks of memory. Because you want them, they all have to be equal. Each, it's the same as your computer. It's just duplicated. When the processes get set to different places, you want them all to be the same. That's standard practice. That's the way it's always been. Um, if you don't understand standard practice, i got a video on that. Go on back, check it out. Um, plus, you want to prevent the ghost in the machines and all the other stuff. Check out best practice. Um, this unit only has one memory stick in it, so it's running single channel. If I put a second one in, I'll run dual channel. To confirm that, start it up, go into your BIOS settings, in the BIOS settings, in your computer information, it will tell you if you're running single channel or dual channel. Now, some of the higher end boards and some of the old boards that are out there used to give you the options and probably still do give you options if you look for them, if you want to run single channel or dual channel. Even though you got two memory sticks in there, you can still run single channel. Same in the other video, I mentioned that. You can run single channel on two memory sticks. Why? Because you can run dual channel on four memory sticks. So that means these two are running on a channel, these two are running on a channel. That's two on a channel. Same configuration, except for you don't have the other two on the other side. Um, my best standard practice that I've always recommended, going back to the other videos, is if you want 8 gigs of memory, you want 8 gigs in each channel. So total is 16. It helps from errors, ghosts of the machines, it helps from everything. That's the best standard practice that I recommend to everybody. Buy it when you first do it. 
because it's almost impossible to find the matching memory. If you want to find the matching memory, because I brought it all up in the past video, ghost of the machines, all the weirdness. If you don't find the matching memory, you could have a lot of issues, especially when you start getting into dual channel. Single channel, most of the time you're running one stick, maybe possibly two. You don't have so many issues that could possibly come up. If you're running dual channel and you got eight sticks of memory into that thing, you want to make sure they're match set. You want to make sure they're, you know, good set, that they're compatible. Imagine the possibility, the odds, the numbers that come up with running more sticks of memory. There's videos out there, I've mentioned it on the other video, that I have links to these people on my site where they've done mix match memory. They've tested it on gaming, they say it works. Again, what motherboard are they running? What units are they running? I'm talking about a home user, business user that buys stuff pretty much off the shelf, pre-made, generic motherboards. If you want to go out and buy a $500, $600 motherboard, put it in here, that changes things for you. You have options to do because that motherboard will help you do those things. This is for those people that have these kind of computers at home that don't want to drop thousands of dollars into these things. This way, you can find what you need. Easiest way to find the memory is you take out the memory you have. I have a video on that too, about installing the memory. Take a picture of it. Get all the information. Look up that memory. If you can't find that memory, go on the compatibility list. Maybe you can find better memory that will fit in this unit. Remember, this is a manufacturer that's trying to make something as cheap as they can to make as much money as they can. These motherboards, I can almost guarantee, will support other memory, other makes, other models, other speeds, other things out there. Just because it has this memory in there, this brand, doesn't mean that's all it can take. Maybe this brand only has 1333 memory but you can go on that manufacturer site and find another brand that has 2000 or 3000 or 400 or 4000 memory speed that will work on your board and it may be cheaper because it's available because this brand basically made memory when this unit came out after this unit stop coming out this went away how hard is it to find this at that point unless somebody's taking these old units and scrapping them and selling parts it's gonna be pretty hard to find you may be able to find another manufacturer that has memory this comes into big time when you're dealing with dual channel or multi channels when you get into servers when you get into servers, you usually buy higher grade memory because of a couple factors. It's a server, you want it reliable. Number two, if you want to upgrade, you have the availability, availability of getting that memory. That's one of the factors you want to think of when you're dealing with this. If you decide to go to dual channel, and for some weird reason you don't follow my advice of buying all the memory at one time that you want and you buy two sticks and you have four slots and you buy two eight gigs or even two four gigs because you really don't need a whole lot of memory and you're not following my advice when I say buy what you need split them equally eight and eight and you want eight so you buy four and four and then you decide you know what he keeps telling me that let me go back and buy two more sticks of memory because I have two more slots. You're fine doing that. You could split the two memory sticks on the channel into four and four because each channel will work together. 
Usually, I don't recommend it, but you can do it. I would recommend you use 888 and 8. Overkill it. Make sure you got what you need. Because two years from now, when you decide to put other software in, go to the new OS or whatever you want to do, you might not be able to find what you had. Because you may be running DDR2, DDR3, and they're on DDR8. No longer manufacturing that older memory. Um, even though it's a well-branded, well-known thing, the technology's moving. Technology's moving. I don't want you to be at a point where you are, oh, now I gotta buy a new computer. So that's where these best standard practices come in. It's to help you out, business environment, home environment, that, you know, even if you have to, in two months, you buy two sticks of memory, and you know the manufacturer, and you know who you bought it from, and two months later, you have the money, you buy the other two, put them in, that's great. Load it up, make sure you're there. Because that's good, because that means this will last you. The last thing you want to do is keep putting money in, money, money, money in, and all of a sudden, you can't use it. Um, same like with networking. Things come out of date. You got to advance. The way computer technology is today, you can buy a very good CPU, very good memory, very good a lot of things in it nowadays that you don't need to buy a custom. You can buy an off the shelf i9, i7, AMD, that you know, multi cores and lots of memory and all kinds of bells and whistles in it. But I just want to press there is a difference between single channel, dual channel. You can run single channel with two memory sticks, you can run dual channel with two memory sticks. It's position and setting. Um, I think that covers most of dual. Only issue I have with single and dual is I cannot do a solid benchmark on benefits, on how it better performs. Because the motherboards, even though you can use the exact same motherboards, you're changing settings. You're changing memory positions. You're changing things. It's going to be, it, it's too difficult to get an accurate test. If you have two boards that are designed pretty much identical, one with two and one with four, or even on the same motherboard using the different slots, it, it, it's a hard test. I cannot give you a solid, like, you're going to get a 50% boost. You're going to get a 25% boost. So a lot of us will tell you this is the best standard practice. This is the best thing to do because in the long run, this will help you. Depends on software, depends on your OS. It just depends on a lot of factors. Um, there's a lot of other people out there that have done gaming benchmarks on it so that you can see pixel rate and a lot of other factors, refresh rate, um, all on there about that that what tells you that dual channel runs better it'll run better you get better results but that's in the gaming world that's not you at home trying to do your taxes you at home on Facebook you, you at home doing other things of course more memory is going to help you in the real world go online, you do stuff, that memory is used. The more memory will help you. The faster memory will help you. Um, going to a solid state drive will help you. These are things that will help you better perform. Um, I think that's about all I want to cover in this. I will probably end up doing another video on multi stuff. That would basically be Xeons and, and the higher end business performance. Um, that'll be further down the line. But for this part of memory, 
I think I've covered everything. I've got lots of videos out there. Go ahead and hit the subscribe. Go check out all the other videos. I've covered a lot of details and a lot of videos. I wanted to make sure that I separated single channel and dual channel so that at home, even if you're new, you're getting into gaming, getting into business, you're a home user, now doing business stuff, you understand the differences. Maybe you're trying to do your Zoom meetings and you're having issues because you don't have enough memory. There's factors you can do. You can upgrade, you can totally change out your memory. You can, if you have four slots, you can fill four slots. If you have one stick of memory in there, go to the four slots, go to dual channel, two sticks in each. These are factors, these are terms you need to know now with all of this that's going on around us that a lot of people don't know. They just go out and buy a computer. Oh, this has so much memory. This has this, this has that. But like I said, if you really look at some of these manufacturers, they are not following best standard practice. They are giving you 12 gigs of memory in two slots. They're not matched memory. They're not match sized. You're going to have issues. They'll tell you it's fine. It's great. You know, you can do this, but it's not standard practice. Why wouldn't they just give you 16? As you being the shopper, as you buying these things, I want to educate you so that you don't have issues because the manufacturer is telling you it's okay but it's against standard practice. If you go out and you really look and you really look around and you go into a lot of these customized features, a lot of them won't let you choose 12 gigs. So this is one of the points that really got me upset over these last few years that really drove me into doing these videos to help you guys out is, yeah, they tell you it's okay, but it's not a it's against standard practices and this is where I want the home users to know because most IT professionals and most people that have been around for a long time know this you at home don't understand this you don't understand this you know you may be buying a computer for the first time and you're in your 80s or 70s or 60s because now you need it to go to the doctor to see your doctor you know these are things I want to make sure that you're aware of that you understand and basically you're not getting ripped off and you're not being cheated because to me giving someone 12 gigs of memory a 4 gig and an 8 gig stick is basically cheating and ripping someone off because you're not following standard practices and then you sign up for these box stores for these repair services and you keep taking it back, taking it back, taking it back. And they don't know what's going on and they can't figure it out because of things like a memory goes to the machine because they didn't follow best standard practice. Got my rant out of the way. Next rant, hit the subscribe. Need you to hit subscribe. <laughs> got all my rants out of the way for all this memory hopefully this will be the last video for memory um, probably the Xeon will be next I don't know how long that will take me I got to find a lot of stuff before I get into that one um, didn't have everything I really wanted to show on this so sorry but this should give you the basics um, thank you so much for tuning in Hit the subscribe, watch all the other videos, got lots of them out there, lots of them coming.